All right, what we got right here is a 2001 Subaru Outback Wagon BDC, and it's a 3.0 engine. This will work on uh, many models. It's the same on many models that are the 3.0, the H6 engine. It doesn't always have to be the BDC. We're going to change out the thermostat. To get started, we're going to be looking underneath. We got three bolts in front on this guard right here. They're metric, I can't remember the size, I note shortly. Three in front, oh, there we go. And then way back in the center, behind, or just after the oil pan, facing straight down, there's two bolts right there. And then in the wheel wells, right there. And you can turn the wheel well to get better access, or turn the wheels or just reach under there and get your arm behind the tire here. And we'll get started on taking that off. Uh, I find that it was easiest to, I just did this on a 01. This is actually, or an 02. This is an 01 and it's virtually the same. So I did the wheel wells first and then took those out. And then I took these front ones off and the back is a little bit more flexible than this. This is pretty rigid, and I don't know how the weight of this whole thing coming down would bear on these bolts, if it would crack it or not, especially on these vehicles since they're like 16 years old by now. All right, I'm going to get working. All right, now that that guard is down, um, you can locate the where the thermostat is. And there's a hose coming off the bottom of the radiator and then goes to the engine. And your, your thermostat will be right here. It has two bolts, just undo those. They're pretty easy to get off. Unlike these other ones that to get the guard down if you're from anywhere in the salt belt where nuts and bolts become one with your car. And before you take off and you undo this uh, casing or gasket, whatever, you'll want to probably drain the uh, radiator. And that's easy to do. It's on the passenger side on the bottom. There's a plug that you can undo. It's just a plastic piece. If I can get it here. There it is. Just like a plastic wing nut right there. Once you get this draining, sit back and wait. It takes a while. And be sure you have your radiator cap off. It may help a little bit. Let's see if we can get this to focus. Check out how dirty that stuff is. Look how clean that stuff is. That's what you want it to look like. I would guess that this car has never had the coolant drained. All right, get your 10 millimeter socket. And I already loosened these up, but they are pretty easy on both cars that I've done. They're pretty easy to knock loose. And you're going to start getting some dripping relatively quick. And uh, I'm not wearing gloves. I should be. All right, I'm going to put this down. I'm going to put this down to get this other bolt. Be sure you get one that has a gasket or get the gasket. This one didn't come with a gasket, so I had to buy that and put it on. So this thing on top. This copper looking thing or whatever it might be that needs to go on top on both vehicles when I took it out that's where it was so I want to put it in the same way and then let's see if we can get this in there safely All right, reach around that hose and then be sure you get it seated in there good. Push it in as much as you can. All 
once it's there on its own. Get that hose back up here. Make sure that feels like that gasket's touching both things. There's no metal hitting. And then we can put in our bolts. Next, you'll need to add coolant in, fill up the radiator overflow up to the maximum level found on the side down there. Then, slowly fill up the, the radiator. That's where the radiator cap was. Take it off, put a funnel on there, and slowly fill it up. Once you get to the, once it's maxed out, be sure there's only just a little in there, because uh, if you're alone like me, you're gonna have to go start the car and you don't want to have to spill that everywhere or have it tip off. Once it's filled up all the way, you'll need to start the car and then come back around and add a little more coolant in here up to maybe about there. There's funnels specifically for this where it's called burping the system. While the car's running, there's going to be bubbles coming out and it's going to be working out all the air in the system. You need to get it all out otherwise you're going to have overheating issues and cause some big problems. So with the car running, you'll see bubbles coming out. Just add a tiny, a little bit of coolant so that it's high enough where it's gonna, when those bubbles come out, more fluid will go in and replace that air bubble with, with coolant. And some people will push on this hose right here to get those air bubbles to come out a little better. Um, you can do that, just be careful. Um, uh, there's belts back there. I actually took off the snorkel or air intake, whatever you want to call it, and you have ac way easier access without having to be so close to the, the uh, belts there. Run it for a little bit until you're comfortable. You're not seeing any bubbles come out or very, very little bubbles. And then put the st stop the engine put the, the cap back on the radiator and run it until it's at normal operating temperature. You see the gauge on and hopefully the fan will come on on the radiator. Once you've reached that temperature, shut it off, let it cool down for like a, a half hour to an hour, however long it takes for it to be safe to take that radiator cap off again and then burp the system redo what we just did with the funnel. Put a little co coolant in there and then run the engine again and let those air bubbles work out. Once you've done that, you can put the cap back on and you have fresh coolant in your system and you're good to go.